I have six o'clock and I would like to call the uh, building committee meeting to order. We do have a form here. And so we'll go into the review of the minutes as everybody had an opportunity to look over the minutes. The minutes look okay. I have a motion by Mr. Whitaker to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I have a second by Mr. Nolner. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? It does, the minutes do stand approved. Thank you. We'll move into um, our discussion items uh, and start with the courthouse improvements here. Um, the first um, item we've got is the heating and air system. Um, Mayor, I know that you've been working with this, um, with a company here to um, get us a proposal. Uh, yes, sir. We had uh, two gentlemen that are here with us today came out and looked at the courthouse, along with myself, Mr. Salee, and Mr. Jewell. And uh, based on what their tour of the courthouse, they put together a proposal to replace the HVAC system. And they also included some items in there to make it eligible for American Rescue Fund grant money. And uh, they're here tonight to explain their proposal. So I'll invite them to come up and speak on their proposal and you can ask questions as you choose. Thank you guys. Uh... Brian Bolin with Train Company and also Dylan Rose with, with Train. We, we came out, I think uh, y'all have been looking at renovating the courthouse for a little bit and we came out and took a look at it. And based on your system, it's a little over 50 years old. I think we passed out a piece of information here with kind of a overview, but with your system a little over 50 years old, you've got a chiller, boiler and some different fan coils throughout. Um, but what we've put together here is replacing the existing system with a, an updated system. But also with that, we're including bringing in outside air, increased filtration, and some other items that allow it to be eligible for using the funds from the American Rescue Funds in order to be able to afford to, to do the renovation of it. So, um, In, a, a part of this thing is also going to have control so we can have better control over the facility and also a timeline because as, as far as we had talked about it looking at maybe depending on when y'all's approval would be with uh, time delays on of equipment we kind of order the equipment and look at doing that in the fall so that we're not doing it over the heat of the summer as well um I can go into as depth as y'all want to, but I don't know if it's more if you've got questions about what we're looking at doing. I don't know how in depth technically you want me to get on the system that we're looking at installing or not. Uh, okay, that's fine. So I didn't know how, how in depth we wanted to go. So currently the system you've got, you've got a chiller outside that chills water down, pumps it to these different air handlers throughout the building. And then in the winter time, you have to switch over. So you have to stop cooling and you have to switch over to the boilers, which are in the basement. So you can't do both at the same time. You can only do one at a time. And pretty much for you all, you have a, a set changeover time fall. You're going to switch over to heat and then you're pretty much stuck with heat until some point in the springtime, you're going to decide to make that switch. So sometimes in the, the fall and spring, when we have these swing days, like even we had through the Christmas time period when it was 70 degrees here, you can't switch back over to cooling. You've got to stay in the heating mode. The system we're looking at doing is called a variable refrigerant flow system. So we will put back units in similar locations to where they are, but instead of, of flowing water, whether it be hot or cold, we'll actually flow refrigerant to those and each unit can kind of do its own heating or cooling. So what we're going to gain with that in this 
building is, you'll be able, you, we could be heating up here and cooling an office downstairs, and those can happen simultaneously. What it also does is it's very energy efficient in doing that because instead of just using electricity to cool the water down for the whole building, we can actually transfer, if we're cooling up here and we're heating downstairs, we can actually change that energy, that heating and cooling from one space to the other instead of just using electricity to, to brute force cool it or heat it. So we will end up having, we'll take the, the air handler off out or the chiller outside and the boiler out of the basement. We'll have a unit outside. We'll have these similar units where they're located now. And then we're also going to add outside air units. So some units that will be dedicated to bringing outside air into this space and whether it be heating or cooling it, but it will, it will add that outside air, which will be diluting any kind of contaminants that can be inside which currently this facility, as far as I can tell, has no outside air kind of coming into it from, and that would have been standard back in the 70s when this was designed. So I think what you will end up with um, as well is controls that will be a part of that. So you will, will be able to remotely change the temperatures or put it into a setback. You'll be able to um, get notifications if something goes wrong with the temperature, the heating and cooling system, if you're not here. So it won't be a situation where you will come in for a six o'clock uh, in the evening building meeting and find out that the, the air conditioning system's not working. You'll be notified of that earlier. So there's a lot of advantages there. It also helps save energy by being able to set those things back. Or if you know you're going to have this meeting, it'll turn the air conditioning or heating on. 30 minutes before and get the space to the correct temperature. And then when you leave, it will automatically adjust away from that. So I think it's just overall, you will get a, a complete system that will kind of hopefully set this up for the next 40 years. Other questions? I'm probably at an advantage here because we have had discussions about this. I just, there's some things that came out in those discussions that mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everyone knows. Uh, we were talking about trying to time this so that um, the downtime would be in a more temperate time of year was one Correct. reason we were talking about fall. And we said that approximately two to three weeks to do a tear out install. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, and we should have minimal interruption to the space itself. Because what we're really looking at is these units on the wall and rerouting refrigerant piping in the same places where the, the chilled water piping is. So a lot of it's gonna be in the basement, running pipes in the basement, putting something outside, changing these units out. But yeah, I think we were talking three weeks at worst a month of downtime. And it would, should be stuff that if we do it during a temperate time, you could still use the facility. Any other questions? And I think I'll note, as, as I mentioned earlier, what we're doing is we're adding in these, we'll call them indoor air quality measures into this building, which then qualify it. Um, we have a individual that we have uh, brought on as a consultant with train company to help us with these projects and find that in helping governments like yourself use these type of projects to qualify for the American Relief Fund. So we're doing this very similar to this. We're doing this project as well, um, kind of in the same stage as you all are, but also in Wilson County, we're doing this. And we're also doing this in Wayne County down south. Um, both of them are for their courthouses. We're doing very similar um, indoor air quality measures to renovate their whole courthouse buildings. Any other questions? I'll say something. Uh, I, I got an article from a, in a magazine called uh, Consumer Reports. Yeah. And uh, it listed train as one of the most dependable uh, heating and air companies 
out there. But just thought I'd give you two cents worth. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And you know, Train has been a part, at least of Tennessee as well. We've got manufacturing plants all over the United States, but one of our largest plants is actually up in Clarksville, if you're unaware of it, that we produce pretty much most all of the rooftop equipment in the United States is kind of made up in Clarksville. So yeah, we're we're kind of proud of that as well as being a a large manufacturing plant here in Tennessee. So thank you. I will say that we looked at, explored several different types of systems other than a variable refrigerant system, forced air system, things of this nature. And they're just, this building, the nature of the construction of this building and the historical nature of it, it just wasn't real feasible to go with that type of system. Uh, this probably would match up with um, the historical aspects of the building and retain them uh, more than any other system. Plus it was probably the most efficient systems there is for this type of configuration. So uh, it's pretty state of the art and uh, I think it would serve us well. Yeah, I think as in, if you compare it to a, a forced, what we call a forced air system, which is what you would find in a lot of commercial buildings or maybe even your house or something like that, trying to run all that duct work in this building, there's just not, there's not the space and we would have to end up, you know, maybe hurting some of the architectural characteristics of it to try to run that. And I think this will match up pretty closely to what was here before, but bring it into as Mr. Jewell said, a, a very modern up, you know, system. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Mr. Dollar? Do we have a, uh, do you have a February uh, half price uh, discount or? Is this, the, is this the only company that's gotten back with a bid for us? Uh, no, we actually had two other ones prepare us a bid, and they're roughly in the same range. One of them was not the VFR via variable refrigerant flow system. It was more like what was currently here, and so you still had some limitations of the current system. <clears throat> and then this one, they had had experience working with other counties to make it qualify for American Rescue Fund, so that would take some of the financial burden off the county to use those funds. And also, they are a part of our Omnia partnership, which is a purchasing cooperative we're a part of. So. We don't have to bid it out. We could go under the purchasing cooperative and do it that way. And I'll, I'll add in on that too, as far as pricing. If we're being compared to others, I'm not sure some of the others would have the indoor air quality extras that we've put into this so that it can qualify for the American Rescue Funds. So we've, in that aspect of indoor air quality and make it, qualify for the American Rescue Funds, we've kind of gone over and above maybe what would normally be done to, to, to get those extras in there to make it qualify for it. Thank you, I read your proposal and, um, and I like it. Yes, how much of the rescue funds, are they, they gonna pay all this or we gotta pay some or what? Mayor, would you like to address mm -hmm. that? Yes, sir. We should be able to pay for the entire project using those funds. So there should be, it, it, it's not really a grant like you would think where there's a match or anything. It was a, an allocation of a certain amount of funds to the counties and you can use it if you meet these eligibility requirements. And that's why they put in those indoor air quality control pieces because that make, makes it fit the CDC guidelines for ventilation system improvements. So we should be able to fund the entire thing out of the American Rescue Fund. Yes, sir. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Dylan Rose. I'm also with Train Technologies, but I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, is everyone here familiar with it and kind of how the process works or is anyone not super, super familiar with it at this point? Okay, well good. Well, that, that's why I'm here to talk about that. So we did a strategic partnership with a company whose job is to help us kind of navigate these waters, if you may, because you know, um, with this kind of funds, you know, you have to do appropriate projects to be granted to use those funds essentially. And, you know, kind of the way it works is they're going to break it down into two different funds, if you may. Part of it's the Coronavirus Relief Fund and then the American Rescue Plan Act. So your CRF and your ARP. 
So, you know, the first thing you want to look at is, you know, how are you going to allocate these funds? So, you know, with the FRF, they pretty much give you all a 50% disbursement in May of 2021, which I know we talked about mayor, and the second disbursement will come in May of 2022. So it doesn't actually expire and need to be obligated until December 31st of 2024. So they give you a very generous timeline to use all those funds, you know, within that time frame. Um, you know, with those funds, you know, like I said, they must all be covered. The obligations and all work has to be completed um, no later than 2026. So December 31st, 2026, all work should be completed. Obviously, ours is all planned to be done this year, of course. But that's just a little bit about the fund in general. Um, and if you all have any questions, I'd be happy to do my best to answer them for you guys. Thank you. Uh, did you have a question earlier, Mr. Slim? I I would like to add that I, I don't think he brought up the fact that this new system that they're bringing in has a lot of fresh air capability where what we have now has none whatsoever. So he may be able to talk a little bit about that too. Yes, yeah, so part of the system we're doing is you know, not only improving the indoor air quality through our filtration and just refreshing that air, but also adding those outdoor air quality systems, which if you want to speak a little bit more on from a technicality standpoint, he's the engineer here. But yeah, that's part of the plan is to bring in more outdoor air quality so you're constantly providing recycled air, if you may. So you don't have the exact same air just flowing through, um, you know, like a lot of, I guess, other buildings are doing. And even like airplanes these days, they're now changing their filtration systems and trying to be more air in the airplane. Just think of it as just trying to cycle through more to prevent any, you know, contaminants, viruses that are in the air from kind of settling in your buildings, if you may. Thank you. Is there any discussion in regard to um, the heating and air systems here in the courthouse uh, from anyone? Yes, sir. What kind of decision are we supposed to make tonight? Or is this just a, this just a fact finding thing? We'd make a recommendation to the commission. So I guess a, a motion to 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 recommend that, that these, this be done as um, uh, this proposal from train to the uh, county commission. If someone would, was that is that what would be helpful, Mayor? Yes, sir. You'd recommend to the county commission for uh, funding. Yes. Sir. Would anybody like to make a motion to that effect? Well, let me correct myself. I guess it would probably have to go to budget and finance first for funding, but it's just be a decision of allocating some of those funds we received to this project. Chair would entertain a motion at this time if, uh, if any uh, member of the committee would like to, to make one. Mr. Jewell makes a motion to uh, move this to budget finance and to the whole commission uh, for approval and implementation. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll make a second on that. And when it sends forward, if, if we have 100%, make sure it says of our full uh, backing. Yes. We do have a second by Mr. Nolan. All those in favor, um, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. It's the, the motion stands approved. Thank you. Appreciate you all coming out tonight. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Moving on, uh, the election office. Um, uh, Mr. Slee, would you like to address the improvements there? Yes, sir. We've, uh, we've got everything done. The painting's done. Uh, we've sealed uh, the small vault with a new uh, epoxy sealer on the floor and painted the walls. The lights are redone in the big vault. We're waiting on uh, one person to help us out with the uh, combination on the big vault. We removed one of the units uh, that was not working just got a little bit excited and jumped a gun, I guess, thinking we were gonna get some new units for uh, those three rooms. Uh, we didn't hurt it in any way, it's not hurt. Uh, we've got Gilmore's refrigeration gonna come and work on the valve that actually, the only thing's wrong with it, the valve that allows the temperature water to flow through it and not the little cutoff valve. Uh, is not working. So he's gonna come work on that. And it's just a matter of uh, connecting two copper lines back up and uh, 
electricity to it and it should be back up and running. We're waiting on uh, the flooring company to deliver the floor. It'll take uh, anywhere from three to six weeks for that new hardwood to acclimate to the, to the temperature and humidity in those rooms. And then they'll come lay it and sand it and stain it to match the, the hallway downstairs. But uh, we're, we're moving forward. We like the blinds uh, yet to order. I'm having a little bit of a tough time finding the blinds we want. And uh, everything else is in real good shape, though. We're, we're looking forward to getting them in there. Thank you, Mr. Slade. Does anyone have any question for Mr. Slade? Okay. You, re you removed one unit. Did I get that right? Yes, sir. It, it's removed, but it's been at the shop, uh, wh it, which is probably a good thing because we've took it apart and cleaned all the contaminants out of it and washed the drain pans and, and uh, put new drain tubes and everything in it. So it's just a matter of reattaching a couple of lines. So you, you're going to be putting it back in? Oh, right? yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Definitely going back. What, what is the estimated time on the floor? I thought we did. I was under the belief that we were going to have that in over the holidays or before the end of the year. Is it delayed or? I, I don't. I didn't know we were supposed to have it done that fast. We've kind of been in a holding pattern with the flooring guys because I didn't want paint and dust and everything else all over the new hardwood. And we're just now uh, going to sweep and vacuum the floors and get everything cleaned up and ready for them. So it, I, I guess it's my fault, but. Uh, oh, it's nobody's fault. I just, uh, I just, is there going to be any kind of delay from when we tell them, okay, bring it. I know it's got to sit and acclimatize, but I'm saying, is there, are we going to have to wait two months to get it in here or? I wouldn't we think know? we're that far out. I, I can call Lee and, and uh, email your response to the committee, but I, would, I wouldn't think we're that far out. No, just wondering, I, I don't think there's any way that we're going to meet this deadline for the election commission to move. Do you, Mayor? No, and that's what we had discussed when the training representatives were here, given the timeline of them coming in and putting in the system and that the building is going to be down for three weeks, maybe a month it was decided it'd probably be best to wait and leave the collection commission where they are. Let's get everything in place and get it done properly and get the H new HVAC system in and then have them move in after the November elections. Because also you had to qualify it for American rescue funds and there was a lot of changeover of rules and all that stuff. So it created a lot of uncertainty and it just the timeline was not going to match up to be able to use those funds and, and get the project done at the same time. Well, the, the timeline also got moved up on us from them because of this uh, unexpected primary election that's, that's going to happen that wasn't factored in to begin with. So uh, I don't, there's no rush now. We're not under a gun, so to speak, on this. So uh, mainly wanting to make everybody aware of that, that they're still planning to come. They're very happy, my understanding, with what's been done. And uh, it's just they're not going to be able to do that to follow now. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Slee, for the update. Moving forward, uh, the windows here in the courthouse have, Mayor, have, the, have you been able to contact anyone that could do the uh, work of uh, putty, putting some fresh putty in them and painting them up, uh, uh, the windows? The ones I've spoken to so far were not interested. Uh, I did find an RFQ from another, I mean, excuse me, an RFP from another county doing exact same kind of work as this, leaving the windows in place, reglazing them and repainting them and everything. So I'm going to adapt that and send it out. Uh, that was from, I believe, Bedford County, where they were, actually got a grant to do it. However, their grant was 20 something thousand and their project came in at like 260 th something thousand dollars. But in speaking to one of the people about it, they, hoped the iris would not be that expensive but i'm going to adapt that rfp now since I've, I've tried contacting some other people and so far i've struck out so i'm gonna put that rfp together and try to put it out there and see if we can find someone willing to do the project is that something that mr slee's people could possibly do some of or or not i i don't have anybody with uh glazing skills now we we could put a nice bead of silicone or caulk on it but I'm not sure that's what the, what y'all would want. Another thing I'd like to add is it's either this window or this window is a plexiglass window and it's actually blew out the other day. We've put it back in. Uh, 
my maintenance mandate, I didn't have anything to do with it, so I can't explain which one it is, but it, it is plexiglass. And I don't know if maybe y'all want to move that back to rare, real glass or if, I don't think you'd ever notice it if I didn't say anything, but I just want y'all to be aware of that. But on the other answer, like I said, we could, we could caulk it, but I don't, we don't have anybody with glazing skills. It's, it's really an art, in my opinion, Mr. Oliver. And, and I believe Cliff is a little uh, thin right now on personnel. Are you not, Cliff? Y'all spread pretty thin. I had one quit today. So that's another factor. All right. Well, uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to put that um, together and, and, and maybe find someone that'd be interested in doing the work. Mayor, any other questions in regard to the windows? Moving on, uh, the uh, Criminal Justice Center, RFQ, uh, came before law enforcement. So uh, some other matters in regard to the possible new jail and Criminal Justice Center have come before the building committee. So. Uh, Thought it would be good to um, uh, have an explanation of, um, of this before this committee going forward, Mayor, if you would, please. Well, based on the uh, <clears throat> an inspection that was done by Tennessee Corrections Institute, I believe they came and actually spoke to the law enforcement, law enforcement committee a couple of years ago on the need to uh, start looking towards building a new facility, our jails getting up there in age and it's not going to be able to be retrofitted to meet security standards or they said the, the entire plumbing needs replaced and there's just a lot of issues with it and they thought by the time you go and try to retrofit it you're never going to meet their standards so they highly suggest that we start looking in that direction had that need study done which I, the committee has looked at made a recommendation on that it was in front of a, a county corrections partnership committee which the county commission created that considered to consist of judges, district attorney, public defender, sheriff's department staff, jail staff. They looked at it and recommend while we're doing this, also look at building, uh, making it a justice center. Because uh, right now there is a, a major security problem. They're having to take prisoners across an unsecured parking lot. And then also if the Tennessee Department of Corrections brings in an inmate, they're having to sit in a van outside because the facility is just not adequate for that purpose. So that's where we've got the, the Justice Center idea. Uh, and as far as some of the questions that's been asked by the commissioners, as, you know, what, what's it gonna cost? Where is it gonna be built and everything? And we're gone as far as we can on our own. We, we're gonna have to have some kind of architectural engineering firm come in, help us do site selection, actually look at what our needs are in accordance with uh, the, nail, the needs assessment and speaking with the jail and the sheriff's department and come to get come to an idea of what kind of size acreage we're going to need and how big the facility is going to be and uh, give us an idea of what the cost may be. So uh, like I said, we've the justice committee, excuse me, <clears throat> the law enforcement committee did pass and recommend doing the RFQ. Um, the one question that needs to be resolved and it was not addressed at the law enforcement committee and it's cause of a quirk while the sheriff is in charge of it, he feels it's better be done at the law enforcement committee. However, once he moves out of the facility, like he did the courthouse, once he moved out, it went from being under the sheriff to now it's under public works. Once the sheriff's department moves out, what do you want to do with the old jail? Now, everybody that has looked at it has come to the conclusion that it is, it would take a tremendous effort to renovate that building and deal with it. And it's also in a floodplain. Everybody that's looked at it so far, their recommendation was just take it out, uh, take it out of service. So, but I'm bringing this to this committee. Um, like I said, it's in a floodplain. The sheriff did tell me that they're starting to see some buckling in the floors and we believe that's because of some of the flooding we've had and moisture issues. So that's the, the last real major decision. I need to put something or it's been recommended by the Tennessee Corrections Institute and UT that we, have some kind of idea of what we're wanting to do with that old facility while we're doing this. So I'm gonna bring that to this committee and get your thoughts on it. Um, I've told you what we've heard from our, the, everybody that's looked at it so far. So I'll get your thoughts on it. 
do you need any uh, action from us uh, before we uh, talk about what to do with the old jail with uh, RFQ for the new new facility, or or is it good enough referral coming from law enforcement that we don't need to give action on that? Um, I believe the steering committee asked y'all to look at it. So I would think just to go along with what they've asked, if there could be a recommendation come out of this committee to, co uh, to uh, I guess, agree with law enforcement to go ahead and issue the RFQ. Would you like to make that motion? Let, let me ask, what is, uh, what is RF, what was that word again? What do those initials stand for? It's a request for qualifications. Uh, that's what's required by state law. You can't cook. There's two ways to do uh, procurement. You can do what's called a request for a proposal, which somebody looks at and gives you an estimate of what they think a project's going to be. However, if you use an engineering firm, you can't do that. You have to put out a request for qualifications. So they send you back saying, okay, here's the kind of projects we worked on. Here's our qualifications. And you have to pick the best one that has that you feel is going to do the best job, regardless of cost, because you can't figure that into it. So this would be to issue a request for qualifications. Uh, we've had five, I believe, architectural engineering firms contact us so far, wanting to be included on that. So we would send it out to them. They would ask for a lot of different uh, questions and qualifications. They would fill it out. It, it's typically a two week period of what you have it out. Then they would respond. And because there are possible grants out there to help pay for some of this, I would recommend that it goes to the Professional Services Selection Committee because the County Commission in the past passed an ordinance saying grants, if there's gonna be a selection of uh, professionals and it has potential to be uh, associated with the grant that it goes to this professional services selection committee. And there are some grants out there for mental health uh, provisions to put in jails and maybe even some new uh, uh, work release programs and that kind of stuff. There may be some new grant money out there. So I would recommend that when we do this and issue the RFQ that the the firm is picked by that professional services selection committee. I mean, this is the way we have to move forward with it. Um, this will identify a an engineering firm or architectural firm to take on the project. And then they can give us firm uh, cost estimates and help us with location of property and how much we need and things of that nature. So it, it's just the necessary next step. Is anyone that would like to make a motion to recommend to the uh, full commission that the uh, RFQ for the Criminal Justice Center in jail be uh, moved forward? I'll make that motion. Uh, Mr. Nolder makes the motion. Uh, Mr. Whitaker has the second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, please say no. The motion carries. Now on to the um, issue that the mayor brought up in regard to what to do with the old uh, jail building once the um, sheriff has moved out. Uh, what are your thoughts? My thoughts is I'd like to think about it. Um, I didn't know that was something that we needed to decide tonight or even was gonna be brought up tonight. Um, part of the building, as far as the building being used as a, as a um, for a jail or a workhouse or anything of that nature, uh, probably is not that feasible, but uh, you know, possibly some of the front office area could be used in that nature for a while, even if it's a stopgap type measure or to have backup office space in case we have a problem with something else. Um, I, I don't see that that's anything really that needs to be decided at this point. We haven't even decided whether we're leaving there, that we're building something else. Um, you know, that's, that's just my first thoughts on it. Okay. Well, it and wasn't on the agenda tonight, but maybe just something for us to be thinking about Yes, sir. I, I just want to clarify. I wasn't saying a decision had to be made tonight. I was just saying during this process, this is something we're going to have to decide. 
So I just wanted to bring it to the committee's attention. It, it wasn't brought up in law enforcement. I got to going through the RFQ and the gentleman, Mr. Hart had done this based on some other ones and it had a little notation in there about what are you gonna do with the, the, the jail that I had not previously seen. And so I wanted to bring it to the committee for everybody to just know that's a consideration and that's something we need to decide as we go forward. I, I was, if I gave the impression it had to be decided tonight, I apologize because it's not something that's pressing right now. Thank you. It'll be something for us to think about going forward and, uh, and uh, maybe y'all can be thinking about what possible use, if any, the, the old building could be put, put to. Any other questions in regard to the um, new or old jail? If not, moving on, um, the health department expansion. I, I know that we've got a, a letter from the director of the of uh, of the county, the county director for trials of Wilson County is with the health department building. Uh, they're needing more space. Um, would you like to address that, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. The, our new health department director, Mr. Valdez, had uh, met with me after assuming the position and uh, asked me some of my thoughts about uh, the issues they were having with the current space given uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and they were having problems with storage area. They're having to store it throughout the building and it's a little bit too small for their current needs and where they're storing the different supplies throughout the building. It's hampering their ability to properly social distance and do other things. And so he asked me if the county would consider uh, possibly expanding that building. And I said, I thought that would be directly in line with American Rescue Fund because it specifically mentions improvements to public health facilities. And I asked him that one of the things you need to do is prepare a justification and state why. And if you can tie it back to COVID, uh, that's almost right in line with the language from the, the act. And he prepared this letter and sent it to me and it, it does address all that, does directly tie it back to COVID. And he does have a, a kind of a rough estimate in here of what they were looking at. Uh, it'll be two new clinical rooms, each measuring 120 square feet and a new storage room, a measurement of a 480 square feet. So a little over 700 and something square feet is what they're looking at. And he did provide a uh, kind of a rough map Along with this, you should see it in here. It looks like a Google Maps and they kind of got it on the back of the, excuse me, would be the north side of the building towards the highway department. I've already spoke to Mr. Scruggs and he would have no problem, you know, working with us to let that expansion happen. He was um, happy that something could be done with the land. So I don't think there's any issue there. And this, again, this almost qualifies directly verbatim for American Rescue Fund. The only thing is, is, uh, we need to get an engineering firm to go forward on it and uh, get an estimate. Uh, however, <clears throat> late yesterday afternoon, this letter that was waiting for you when you got here, I received this letter. Mr. Valdez sent it to me. As you can see, it is from Dr. Piercy, who is the head of the Tennessee Department of Health. It caught me by surprise. I had not heard anything about them looking to put together a grant uh, for health department improvements, but I got this late yesterday. And as you see there, it does say it's capital improvement grant. It will require a 25% match of the project's total cost. And it can't proceed 10% of our total allocation. But depending on how you figure it, um, we actually got two different allocations from the federal government. We got where we're Metro, we got one for the general services district, which was 2.19 million. And we got another one for what's called a non-entitlement unit, which is smaller cities. That's a little over three. So in total, we got about $5.3 million. This should no, come nowhere near 10%, I would think, of that money. And uh, again, I was very surprised that this grant came out. I'm glad to see it. It just caught me by surprise. And I wanted to make sure that I printed it out and brought it and let the committee know about it. Because I know I'd mentioned this a month or two ago. I think back in November, I'd mentioned that this we were looking at this as a possibility for use of funds. So... That does throw a little bit of wrinkle into it. Uh, they are don't have all the rules and, and everything for that yet. They're probably says they're going to send it to us within the next few weeks. But when we get to that uh, point, I would greatly appreciate that the committee vote to recommend that for funding and uh, let's get those improvements done and uh, kind of get some of these issues he's experienced and addressed. They're also having a problem with their ventilation system, one of their units. And I just spoke to the gentleman from train right before they left. 
I would like to look at some of our other public buildings and see if we can do some indoor air quality improvements as those as well. And they're going to contact me next week and we're going to try to see if we can set up a time for them to look at some of those other buildings and see what we can do for use those funds to make those improvements as well. Thank you, Mayor. I, I do think that this would be one of the easiest things to tie back to COVID because it's just very much straightforwardly um, a necessity that's come out of COVID that they need these extra um, extra storage space and and areas for to work with would uh action from this committee moving forward that we would recommend that the uh, uh, health department um, have these this expansion and that these sort of funds would be sought to to do that would that be helpful it would be helpful i don't know if you want to wait until we have some kind of idea of price or we're looking at uh, doing an engineering firm or something uh, i'll leave that to committee but yes that, that would be very helpful because it needs to go through a budgeting process and be allocated and uh, so yes that would be helpful based on current cost that amount of space if we don't go bigger than that i would think we might want to go bigger than that since we have other funding available to do it with, if we can, probably in the neighborhood of 200, uh, that'd be roughly 200, $225 a square foot, which is about what commercial type construction is today, even with inflated prices. So uh, I think it's very well within reason uh, what they're wanting to do. And if not, we might want to explore even doing a little bit more uh, to carry us a little further into the future, not just their, their current needs. Anyone else have any questions in regard? So at this point, probably no action from us tonight until we hear a little bit more about um, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, I want to get. A little, I want to see what these these grant requirements are going to be. I suspect you're going to have to do a procurement process like we do on the other ones. Like I mentioned earlier, with getting an engineering firm, uh, I had mentioned to I believe some of the other committees about doing just a general civil engineering firm and having them do all these projects. The only question I have about that is since we do have trained and they're going to look at those ventilation system improvements, it might be something to narrow down to just the health department. But I would like to have a little bit more time to think on that and then see what these grant requirements are gonna be before we move forward on it. Cause I'm not sure what those rules are gonna be yet cause they, they don't have them. Thank you, Mayor. We'll, we'll certainly get it on a agenda for a future building committee meeting uh, at the time that you learn more in regard to those requirements. Any other questions in regard to the health department's need for more space? If not, we'll move on to other business. Is there any other business to come before the building committee tonight? Is there any public comment? Certainly, a yes, sir. If there's no comment from the public, I was going to make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Have a second by Mr. Whitaker. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed. We do stand adjourned and thank every one of you very much for coming out tonight. Bye.